All right, I want to share with you first and foremost a little bit of a caution. If you're going to modify your stove, it could have potential hazards or even kill someone. So you got to be careful about that. Yes, that is mine, and we'll get back to that later. On a lot of your stoves, they're not really designed to be very efficient. They're designed to basically heat the space, and they don't really care if its efficiency is 100% or if it's like 60. I realized there was quite an inefficiency and there was a lot of heat going out of the exhaust. And when I see inefficiency, I'm one of those people where I just want to do something about it, especially if I can. So that's where I did in this video. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can extract that heat, but a radiator is a good way. Now, most radiators, they have a small inlet and a small outlet because they're designed for water. However, a turbo is designed to move massive amounts of air and it has almost the exact same pipe size as my pellet stove. Plus they're pretty affordable. So when I started thinking about all this, I decided I was gonna give it a try and see what I could do. All right, let's get to it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how a pellet stove works in case some of you don't know. So a pellet stove uses wood pellets. And these pellets are made by having sawdust pressed through a die. However, they don't have like a whole lot of surface area to keep burning very well. So what you have is you have a blower on the side of the pellet stove. And this fan draws air in for the fire and it routes it back through there. And then it comes out below here and goes right through the coals. You can see here where the air goes in and then it comes out through all these holes through the pellets. And then that air is gonna go up around these pipes and down and back and out the chimney. Then from there, usually there's a little heat left and it's gonna go out the exhaust, which that heat actually helps it move through the exhaust. We'll get back to that later too. To get warmth into the room, there's a blower on each side. It's gonna suck air in from this side through there, through these pipes, and that's gonna go out these pipes and into this room. Now the pellets are piled in here, which this funnels them to one area, where an auger, basically a screw device, forces them up. Then they're gonna drop down, and they're gonna come out of there and feed the fire. Oh, enough talking already. Just build something. Oh, our starting in exhaust temperature, 222. Seriously? All right, finally we get to build something.
So now for a test. So remember earlier when I was talking about how the heat in the chimney helps it kind of flow out? And it's going to go out the exhaust, which that heat actually helps it move through the exhaust. Actually helps it move through the exhaust. And since we took out the heat that was helping it go out the exhaust, instead it's going up through the pellets. So what we essentially have here is we have a blower blown into this box. Now that box isn't completely sealed. It's pretty sealed. The air is able to go through that pellet, through the auger system that feeds it, and come right out the top. So now we need a way to help encourage it through. I want to put a fan that's further down the line when it's cooled off. If it works out good, I'll find something more permanent later. So I tried to use my homemade fan, then I tried buying one offline, but that still didn't work. So clearly I need something that's gonna push a little more and I believe it's gonna be more about the static pressure. These aren't very good at static pressure. So I'm gonna try, this is a fan out of a bathroom and the squirrel cage or centrifugal fans, they tend to have a little better static pressure. So I'm gonna take and off camera, I'm just gonna tack weld this together and seal it up. It's working good without backing up. It's pretty low there in the center. I can just barely see the auger through there. While doing this test, I did empty this out because if I had this plumb full, that would provide some resistance and this thing's not always plumb full. So I wanted to test it as if it was almost empty and has the most likelihood for it to back up and out. So it seems to be working really good. Real quick, how does it work? The hot air comes in here, heat rises, it gets trapped in the top, and until it cools, it doesn't come out here. So the coolest air comes out here, and the blower in the back transfers the heat out to the room. Since it's now cooled, it doesn't want to go up, so the fan helps it out. Now let's check out the final numbers. Did this even work? Real quick, we're almost at 3,000 subscribers. I'd really like to hit five at the end of the year, so if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. All right, back to it. As you can tell, like, this feels just comfortable warm. So that is really efficient. One more thing I wanna cover is how many watts this is adding to it. So I only have this hooked up this way so that, that way I could get a reading off of it and show you guys. It's about 203. You can see it kind of pulse as the auger kicks on and off. But I'm gonna unplug first the front heater and now I'm gonna unplug that other fan. That is only 74 degrees. That is amazing compared to before. This housing, 71. You can kind of see a gradient as we go over. In fact, I'm not even sure completely how accurate this is. However, by looking at these numbers and these numbers, I can safely say it's doing really well. And I can just tell by the room. I've turned the pellets down lower and I'm heating up the basement even warmer on a colder day. So it's helping out a lot. All right, well, there you have it. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. And I hope you join in next time.